to orient you about this sagittal section of the pelvis. This is the posterior aspect, showing the sacrum and the coccyx. Anteriorly is the pubic symphysis. And you can see the viscera of the pelvis, <coughs> the rectum here. And this is the urinary bladder. <coughs> the bladder is related anteriorly to the retropubic space. This is the superior surface of the urinary bladder. Inferiorly is the neck of the bladder, and the neck of the bladder lies on the prostate. This is the prostate gland here. This is the prostate. If you look at the inside of the urinary bladder, you will find that the inside of the bladder is thrown into folds. These are the folds here. Because it is an empty bladder, so it is folded. Posteriorly, this is the region of the trigone of the bladder. You can see the upper part of the trigone. In the upper part of the trigone, there is an interureteric bar or ridge, which is thickening of the detrusor muscle fibers. This is the interureteric bar. The apex of the trigone is where the internal urethral meatus starts or is located. This is where the internal urethral meatus is located. So this is the internal urethral orifice. It leads into the prostatic urethra. Here is the prostate, and the inside the prostate is the prostatic urethra. Okay. So this is the internal, this is the internal urethral orifice, and this is the prostatic urethra. You can see posteriorly, posterior wall of the prostatic urethra, there is this prominence here. This is the urethral crest. And on either side of the prominence is the sinus, prostatic sinus. See? This is the prostatic sinus here and you can see the prominence of the urethral crest. So two sinuses on either side of the urethral crest. This characterizes the prostatic urethra. You can see that the prostatic urethra is wide, is, is, is a wide part of the urethra as opposed to the membranous urethra. Okay. Now if you follow the urethra, of course the membranous urethra is not very clear here, the membranous part. Uh, or the urogenital diaphragm should be present here, but it is not very clear. And then I will follow the urethra into the penis. This is the penis in, in a sagittal section, and you can see the corpora of the penis. Superior, the uh, uh, dorsally here is the corpus cavernosum. It looks like a sponge because it's cavernous tissue. A lot of spaces, these spaces here are empty, but they will, when they will be filled with blood, they will become distended hard and enlarged. So this is the corpus, uh, corpus cavernosum, and ventrally is the corpus spongiosum. And in the corpus spongiosum is the penile urethra located. Look here that there is a posterior distension of the corpus spongiosum, which is called the bulb. And anteriorly, the corpus spongiosum continues as the glands of the penis. This is the glans penis. It is distended anterior part of the corpus spongiosum. And you can see that the corpus cavernosum ends blindly, but and it is capped or overlapped by the glands of the penis. If you follow the urethra into the penis, you can see that before the urethra opens into the external urethral meatus, it is dilated here. This is the region of the navicular fossa. So this is the navicular fossa, and this is the site of the external urethral meatus. Okay. Now, behind the urinary bladder, on the posterior surface, or the base of the urinary bladder, you can see the seminal vesicle. This is the seminal vesicle. And on the medial side of the seminal vesicle, this is the ampulla of the vas. If you follow the vas, the vas entering the, entering the pelvis through the deep inguinal ring, and it starts to become distended, forming the ampulla and the ampulla is located medial to the seminal vesicle. This is the seminal vesicle, and this is the ampulla of the vas. They will join <laughs> together and form the ejaculatory duct that opens into the prostate. The ejaculatory duct is not clear in this section. In the second half of, the, of this specimen, you can see the rectum, the ampulla of the rectum here. This is the prostate gland, and you can appreciate how the prostate can be felt by PR examination. Mm -hmm. 
Also, you see the peritoneal reflections in the mirror. This is the peritoneum. The peritoneum is reflected <coughs> from the anterior abdominal wall onto the superior surface of the bladder. And then the peritoneum covers the seminal vesicles. These are the seminal vesicles here. And then is reflected on the front of the rectum. This is the rectovesical pouch. One pouch in the male. The, of course, the peritoneum here covers the anterior aspect of the middle third of the rectum, and then the anterior and lateral aspects of the upper third of the rectum. And then there is no more rectum here. This is the sigmoid colon, which has a mesentery. It will be free because it has a mesentery. Okay. This is the testis. And this is the epididymis. We will, we will deal with the details of these structures later on. So this is the head, body, and tail of the epididymis, and will give rise to the uh, ductus deferens or the vas. I can feel it. It's very hard because it has a lot of muscle fibers, thick muscle fibers in its wall. And you can see how the vas passes through the superficial inguinal ring, which is a deficiency in the external oblique upon your horses then into the inguinal canal and will appear in in the abdomen here in the pelvis enters into the pelvis that's it this is the vase here this is the vase mm -hmm. and now it is going to be this is the vase and now it's going to be distended by becoming the ampulla of the vase here it crosses the ureter okay, i can show it to you on the other specimen we'll go back to the other specimen just to show you the uh, how it crosses the ureter. Here is the ureter coming from the uh, abdomen. The ureter crosses uh, in front of the bifurcation of the common iliac artery. And then as it enters into the pelvis, it is crossed uh, by the by the ductus deferens, by the vas. You can see here, it is crossed. Uh, we don't have it right now. It is crossed by the ductus deferens. It hooks around the ureter and then become distended to form the ampulla, which is located medial to the seminal vesicle. Uh, this is a female specimen, and uh, here I'm going to concentrate mainly on the peritoneal relations of the pelvic viscera in general, and the bladder in specific. So you can see the peritoneum here, it covers uh, or lines the anterior abdominal wall, the inside of the anterior abdominal wall, and will be reflected on the superior surface of the bladder. This is the superior surface of the bladder. See, I'm, I'm remo removing the peritoneum from it. And uh, deep to the peritoneum, of course, outside the peritoneum is the extra peritoneal and the pelvic fascia here. You can see it, the fascia. This is the superior surface of the bladder. From the apex of the bladder, this is a thickening here, which is the median umbilical ligament, which you are familiar with. The peritoneum in the female, will be reflected from the superior surface of the bladder onto the uterus. So this is the uterus, the fundus of the uterus, here. And the pouch, this peritoneal pouch between the uterus and the bladder is called the uterovesical pouch. So this is the uterovesical pouch, here. It is, this pouch is usually empty if the uterus is in this normal position, usual position, antiverted uterus. Then. The, the peritoneum is reflected from the back of the of the uterus. You can see it here. It is reflected onto the front of the rectum. And this will create another pouch. The other pouch is very deep, dependent pouch, very deep pouch. This is the recto uterine pouch of Douglas. Here. Okay? So this is the recto uterine pouch and the utero basical pouch. You can see that here the peritoneum does not cover the posterior surface of the urinary bladder. The vagina. posterior surface of the urinary bladder is related <coughs> to the vagina. And there is no peritoneum intervening here. Okay? In the, in the male, there is a part of the posterior surface of the urinary bladder that is covered by peritoneum that is reflected on the seminal vesicles. 